Welcome back to the table, and today we're going to take a look at another classic game. This is MBT. Classic, it is old. I was trying to see, I thought I saw a year on this the other day, maybe it was on the back. One of the, somewhere it had a year on there, but I thought that this would put it into the classic category. Well, it does say copyright 1989, so I was thinking back, well, what does it take to be a classic? So, if I said 90, then two, 10 years to that and make it 2000, and we're at 2021, so 30, so this is like 32 years old? I think, I think that that helps qualify this as a classic. I remember when I was a little kid, I was probably, I say little kid, I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. Let's see, uh, I'm not quite sure when I got this. It was probably around this time. I lived in Spokane, Washington, and for those from Spokane, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a place called the White Elephant, and it was a general store. It had a little bit of everything. It had a huge toy section, and then it had a, a wall that was filled with board games. And I remember, I got this one time, and it was reasonably priced, which is why I got it. But then I grew up a little bit, moved, and things like this got lost to time. So I have, I have no idea where my copy is. But I'm borrowing this from my buddy. And I thought what would also make it really cool to show this game is I have the new version as well. So I thought I would show a component from here and then show kind of the newer component. And I'm going to take this to my friend to show him because I thought he might get a kick out of that. Let's see, I got some... Yeah, I got, uh, the, the thing is, when I got the new game, uh, GMT Games sent it to me, but they didn't have a box. I had to make my own box, so, I don't know, if it'll fit, maybe I'll dump out, maybe I'll dump out my buddy's stuff and just put in this new stuff. Alright, but here's, here's the box. I always loved this, this artwork, it just, for me, was evocative. I also remember I bought some, uh, I think from GHQ, some scale models that would fit on here. Now this is something that I miss. I do remember this from when I played before. Back when this was common. Mounted map boards. Oh. And the art is just... the color pops. These things are awesome. You could put two... there's like maybe four of these. One, two, I mean, look how vibrant these are. I love these. Two. Here's number three. So this is your Western Germany. Hills. I mean, these things are awesome looking. Fantastic. Yeah, four of them. Great. Okay, so that's maps. You get these, I mean, these are awesome. These are awesome maps. I even told my buddy, I was like, these are fantastic. Something about it. Uh, he even commented, he was like, you know, the older games mounted maps, and a lot of times they had fantastic color. The maps were great, but the counters sucked. So you got great maps, but crappy counters. Well, let's look at some maps for today. I had to admit, I was disappointed with these maps. You get a bunch, though. And I'm just yanking these out of the box. So I think that's all of them. So there, there's your maps. They... Oh, that was something else he said. Man, he's like, man, I wish we had desert maps. Because the, the, the Western Europe maps is nothing but hills and things. I want to be able to shoot clear across the map and, and have clear open field of fire. So here we have MBT. Also Western Germany. Now... Jim Day designed both of these, okay? So the old MBT and the new one. And I don't even know if they put Jim Day's name on here. but I, Yeah, I don't even see his name on here. Um, and I remember reading, and I think people brought this up with Panzer. They were like, hey, how come these maps are so dull? There's no green. How is this Western Germany and whatnot? And one of his comments was, and again, I'm paraphrasing, but it was basically boiled down to readability functionality. So here with the way they got the colors that they've picked, there should be no question as to elevations. And I think that might be something people would argue about. Here would be clearly telling elevations. Like, I mean, 
Here is the outer layer of a hill. This is a hill sitting on the hill. But here, with the colors going from you know the base level up a level up another one up to the highest one there's like no so you've got apparently this is sitting up on top of a mountain range I guess so the idea was there's like no question as to what terrain is right I know these are rough or potholes and you know this is some type of something and that's something else and here's some rough ground so that was the idea readability was the the most important thing that they were looking for with these so um, they might not be the prettiest but their functionality is really good but they're not mounted and I have to admit those old mounted maps look great okay so that's the first thing coming out of the box now this was something else I remembered from my copy was I thought these were awesome these tank data cards are just chocked full. Let's zoom in on this. Wow, this is a Treadhead's dream. I'm sure you could find some games that have more, but check this out. You got all your movement costs there, lots of firing data. You got for this, this is for a BMD, so the 73 millimeter auto cannon, the Sager missiles it's got, a, another machine gun it has. Uh, all your different ammo type there, like if it's heat or GP, AP, uh, NMV, uh, just lots of stuff. I don't even remember what it is, but based on range, and then uh, I think your to hit numbers are in here too. So basically, put everything you needed on this, and it's pretty big, but it's a nice cardboard, cardboard, card stock. Um, so these are perfectly serviceable. There's an M1, and there's a bunch. That was one thing I do remember. You got a lot of vehicles in here to pick from. So, it uh, looks like there. I just saw FRG. So I think this had some German stuff. Yeah, so this even had German stuff. And I think the new one were kind of limited by mostly Americans and Russians. And then you have to get like the, the BOAR expansion or the FRG expansion, which now I'm thinking about it, I might have to break down and get because it is a good game system. Um, but this is what the old forms look like. Here's hit location charts here. Just, just classics. Classic stuff right there. Now the new, the new ones. I should have some here. Yup. I do. I just, they settle into the box here. Yeah. So here's the new ones. Now, you're still getting, see the squads, helicopter, let's find a tank. Uh, so essentially, the information you need is still there, but a person might say it's a little bit condensed. So you have some of your to hit, well, penetration values, I should say. So you've got like the range. So this is telling you if it's point blank out to six hexes, short out to 12, medium long extended, and then the penetration value with that range. Then on the defensive side, let's see, does this have your defensive armor? A lot of it's all gunnery. Hit locate right down here then. Here's your um, armor charts, but it's, it's condensed. So this had like kinetic energy values for level rising and falling, the same thing level rising and falling values, but this talks about kinetic energy. Uh, you take this value, double it for chemical, or if you've got the ERA, there is something here, front values. Um, so the, the information is here, but it's a lot less to track, but it's still here, it's condensed, a little bit easier to follow. But you still have some detail. Um, turret front, turret rear, whole front, whole rear. And then you got your values for that. Turret front, then like if it's the uh, deflected side, so if it's like the front side, so you have a little bit of angling, there's your values there as well. Falling values. So again, a lot of the, the same information, just in a much condensed, maybe easier to follow format. And instead of being the cardstock, they're these bulletproof things, which I think when uh, Panzer came out, uh, good or bad, people liked them or didn't like them, but it did add some heft to the game. And I bet if you put all these together, you probably could stop a bullet or two with them. 
So this is what the old data forms look like, and here's what the new ones are. And that was kind of the goal, just from reading some design notes and interviews with Jim Day, was uh, he also has a miniatures version of the game. And I, I don't know if he had a miniatures version of MBT, but he had Panzer, and this is that same kind of family. But the idea was to take a lot of this stuff that is great to have, but just condense it, make it easier to follow. So you still have a lot of the detail, it's just in a more condensed format. So those cards, here's the original cards. Okay, charts. Here we go. Here's some charts. We got uh, the fold-out charts that I think anybody who's familiar with like Panzer remembers some of these. And uh, here's another one. Is this the same one? Looks like it's the same one, but you're going to get one for each player. MBT game card. All right, line of sight chart sequence to play with all options. Okay, so we've got two of these. And what else is here? Here's an information card. All right, perfect. Turn record track. Let me lift that up a little bit so you can see a little bit more at once. So there you go. Substitute hexes, something there. What do you got here? Some more information. Data card format. All right. So we've got those. What do we have here? Oh, I don't know if this came with it originally or something he added. I don't remember having this when, with my game. Artillery plots? I honestly don't remember if this is an original thing. Now these are photocopies, so he maybe photocopied them out of the book. Maybe they were in the book and he just photocopied them uh, off the back of the rule book. Yeah, so this wasn't like, a, I know some of these Avalon Hill games include a pad of of pages for something so this is something that he clearly photocopied off the back so no mine probably did not have that but here's your rule book I like this red I saw this I think this was how Tokyo Express was this cool kind of red color but you got your basic rules of play classic Avalon Hill three columns of text fine print uh, but I do remember, yeah, the basic game. It says here 10 pages. Oh, he, he made a correction here. A unit with fire, he crossed out fire and move, may expand up to the full number of movement factors. A unit with fire and move orders may expand up to, oh, so that was probably was a mistake. So that should probably be a unit with a move. So if you have a move, you can move up to your full number of movement factors. If you have fire move, you may expend up to one half its movement factors, retain fractions, as they may be useful for road or path movement. Anyway, I just saw that he had a correction, so I was reading that. Yeah, a couple other things he crossed out. Um, yeah, so this was a few pages to get you going. Now, I remember this is what I played as a kid, was basically the basic game, basic firing. And we used miniatures on those map boards. And it was fun. And it was fun playing the M1s. It felt like you were just blowing up stuff left and right. But then it moves into your advanced rules. And this is pretty common with like GMT. You're going to have some basic rules. And then some advanced. And then some optional rules. And here come a lot of advanced. Advanced rules on for movement. Oh, there it is. Right on cue. The optional rules. And this is pretty much how the new book is set up too. You start with some basic rules, then you have the advanced rules, and then all of the optional rules you can think of. So I remember, I do remember when I got it as a kid and I just kind of looked at this and went, oh, I gotta read all this. But I did look and eventually saw, oh good, the basic game was like 10 pages, that I can do. So I did play this basic. Then here's the TO and E for equipment all stuck in here okay so that's that's the original rule book sweet now let's see what you get nowadays nowadays that's let me see what else is in here counter a lot of counters i see some stuff has fallen in here from other stuff so that's not going to apply i'm gonna have to do some house cleaning on this 
Yep. Alright, house cleaning time coming up here pretty soon. Make sure there's nothing else I want to get out of here. Ooh. Uh, find a use for those. Alright, so comparing paper to paper, what do we got? So here's a this is this is from the new MBT. So now we've got the key card here. It talks about your aircraft key card, helicopter key card. Oh, here we go. This is look familiar. Turn record track. Substitute hexes. Well, this is more transport summary track, so maybe not quite the same thing. Hidden unit tracks, so you can keep track of your hidden forces. Okay, so that's one of the new pages. Then we've got the towed data card key. Allied data card key, talking about the allied tanks there, and one for them. Turn track, transport hidden track for them. Okay, then here's just a vehicle data card key in general. Lots of information there. Uh, so even though it's a simpler, it still contains a lot of information for you. And a leg data key for your infantry and crew served. All right, so that's another play aid. Let's see, there was a couple, here we go. Before we look at those, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, here we go. Now here's the new play aid cards, boom. Still, two sheets, terrain effects, spotting, ranges, spotting, spot removal, minefield effects, sequence of play, GP, because uh, this has like AP, GP, this would be like the GP is like the high explosive machine guns, AP is specifically like for the armor piercing rounds, uh, but here's your to hit charts, right, awesome stuff, weapon sight modifier, special armor, and I do believe it's two, one for each person to play. Yep, there's your GP results. So again, a lot of that same information just here. I like the color codes. It's just over the years, you know, they realize maybe printing techniques have improved. And then, you know, people like myself are more visual. So having things, the different charts broken down by color, so they're all related. But there's your two play aids. And now the rule book. So here, the basic rules gets its own book, and it's more than 10 pages. Let's see, what do we got? 20 pages, but um, it's actually a really good 20 pages. It's not the super tiny font, three columns. You got two columns, scale components, geomorphic map boards, the counters are updated. We'll look at some counters here in a second, but uh, here's the rules, sequence of play. Yeah, just broken down a lot different. More examples, color pictures for examples, that takes up some room, but uh, direct fire, AP, overwatch. Yeah, good stuff. Um, really nice rule book actually. And, I'm, and I like that the basic rules are in their own separate rule book. That I do find kind of nice. So you can play and focus on that. Then, boom, you have a whole separate book for the advanced rules. Yeah, so they're coming down on you like a, a T-80, I'm guessing that might be. So all that other stuff we looked here, it's all here. But it's broken down. It looks like it's a lot easier to find what you want. Nice, big, bold, here's what we're talking about. Definitely probably a lot easier to find stuff. Here's your advanced game sequence. Then that comes into all the stuff. I love that shit. Yeah, uh, I remember. So like in the basic game, if you have a little formation, you can give like one order. Um, each tank will get an order here. You can do as a formation as long as they're within a range, certain range limitations by uh, leadership, stuff like that. You can give like one order to a group. You know, just little things I can remember. Uh, it's been a while since I played MBT. I played a lot more Panzer than MBT, but the rules are very similar. However, MBT brings the pain because now it's got helicopters, missiles, and a lot of extra stuff. Uh, so there, there's more rules, uh, different armor types, but the basic gist of the game is still there. I, I think it's a great game, but just kind of flipping through. So that's the new rule book, Cluster Bombs. 
uh, optional rule, then finally it ends with optional rule. So just like the uh, original MBT, you've got your basic, advanced, and then optional. You still have that here. But another thing that they've got for MBT is a playbook. So the playbook generally has maybe some specific scenario rules. Uh, here's the TO and E's here, scenarios, point values. Yeah, this is nice. So you can do like your own, create your own scenarios because here's the point values for different things. A little bit of history. And then there's the TO and E's. They're in here. Uh, different units that, I think these are all the units in the game. Right there. And then you have the scenarios. This tells you how to read a scenario setup. Here's the setup. And then you flip it. And there's the units involved. So just something a little different. Um, they don't have a playbook in the old game. But there you go. This is what a playbook is. A couple extra rules and bits of knowledge for you. And then a bunch of scenarios. And there's a bunch there. Information summary. And then here you go. Combat effect summary. I wish this was on a separate card stock. But it's on the back here. But this is some reminders on, on combat and the effects of combat damage. And this has different things like infantry versus vehicles, infantry versus open top, infantry versus closed, AP, different, different um, against different types of vehicles. I like this. I don't think I saw this on a separate cardstock and that would be nice. I probably That's probably one I would photocopy. Yeah, they didn't have one. I would probably photocopy that so it's separate, not attached to my playbook. All right, well, there you go, playbook. Okay, old MBT has do a friend a favor. <sighs> I, I don't think anything would happen if I mailed this to anybody. It'd be fun. I've always had that curiosity, what would happen? But um, I don't think this would go anywhere or reach anybody or do anything. So good thing to just have nostalgia. And I love looking at, no I don't. I hate looking at catalogs because then I'm reminded on how ridiculously expensive things have gotten now. Midway, 16 bucks. Napoleon's Battles, 25 bucks. Naval War, card game, 10 bucks. Panzer Blitz, 25 bucks. Not anymore. If you want to get a fairly decent used copy, shell out your 80, 90 bucks, right? Uh, squad Leader. How many people would love to get Squad Leader for $30? I don't know. Nowadays, you probably could get it for 30 bucks. I don't think that aged as well as Advanced Squad Leader. You want to get Advanced Squad Leader for 30 bucks? Nope. You can't even get the PDF for 30 bucks. And yes, if you haven't looked, you can go to War Game Vault, and they have an Advanced Squad Leader PDF, all electronically bookmarked and whatnot for $60, which is still better than the 100 bucks for a three-ring binder. Uh, leisure Time VG Victory Games. Oh. Dr. Ruth's Game of Good Sex, 25 bucks. Sweet. Microcomputer replacement parts. You can get some uh, log pads. All right, well, that's some other stuff there. Oh, yeah. It's still cool to see. And what's amazing, you flip through and you see all the board games that are now lost to history. Uh, Stalingrad in a German language, four bucks, nice. Or Stalingrad for 50 bucks. Now see, that must have been a monster game if they were charging 50 bucks back in the day. I wonder if they have MBT in here. How much did, how much was MBT? I remember like maybe 25 bucks. Main battle tank, 30 bucks, close enough. Uh, yeah, is that the complexity level? It has a five. I don't know, what's the number, the circled number? There's a circle number, I'm wondering if that's the, like a complexity, how to order. I don't see. Oh yeah, numbered circles represent war game complexity rating on a scale of one to ten. They had MBT out of five, I think they said. If I was to hand that to my kid, he wouldn't even bother. He'd be like, nope. So five is a medium of the range complexity. Squad leader was eight. Yeah, I would agree. People think that's pretty, pretty complex. Anyway, catalog and the counters. Yes. I know, I know we have some folks out there who probably have counter OCD a little bit like me. This is not 
Good. They're just all in here. Here's some M1s. But uh, let's see. So you got these smaller counters. These are maybe like half inch. I mean, serviceable. They're kind of a olive-ish, drab-ish for Americans. You got the dark Russian green, maybe. German gray. Um, then just some general stuff here. What does that say? Destroyed. A lot of them have fallen out. They need to be clipped and sorted. You got the turrets in here. Yeah, so there's a bunch. Now, I will say with my modern MBT, I ran out of time. I ran out of counter trays at the time. So anyway, here's here they are. So here's counters. There's a bunch. There are a bunch of counters. You have a lot of uh, admin counters in here along with um, MI24. Here's a bridge layer and a, a modern anti-tank piece, ASU. Um, BRDMs. Leopard. I like that the German units were included in here too. I like that. Um, you have to buy the German units as a separate add-on nowadays, but that's fine. But here you go. A lot of counters. So I'm going to pull out a couple of these old ones. And we'll take a look at some of the newer, newer ones. Uh, where's the M1s? For example, well here's some Soviets. Here's some M1s. Alright, now, not that I have really separated these out much better, but I just got them in plastic baggies. But now this is what the new style is. So we have here, here's some M1s, and then that's a new one. So it takes about one and a half old ones to be a new one. All right there. Let's find where's some Russians. Ah, Russians in a baggie around here somewhere. Well, they must still be in this box, maybe. Found them. Yeah, so the new MBT, we just get Russians and Americans. Oh, nope. One side had Soviet, so I assume these were tanks of some sort. Let me see if we got some Russian tanks that are floating around here. Well, here's a Leopard. I don't have an equivalent MBT new, new Germans. Oh, here we go. Dark green. Here we go. This is a T, T64, T72. All right. So we've got... Uh, couple M1s and then here's a T80U what's on the back T55 versus a T80 that's a T72 let's see that's a T55 T80 T80U T80BV looking to see if I've got a like a T72 sitting on the top here yeah there we go T72. Now, let's bring these in. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so there we go. So comparison, there's your, there's a Leopard 2 on the back. I love Leopard 2s. Anyway, here's a couple Abrams versus old Abrams. And then we have a couple Russian variants and a couple of the new style. And then, again, I don't have any of the new British or anything like that. And then if you got the admin counters. So the new way, I would give them their hidden order, what they're going to do. And flip it. They're going to get a fire. And here we have maybe, I think I'm blocking some light. What are these? Bot counters, suppression don't see ah there we go well that's if it's spotted I don't see the orders maybe you did it different maybe you didn't have a token for the order that you wanted them to do maybe that's a new thing because I don't remember from 30 years ago when I played I don't see any that say 
for fire or if you're going to move or halt move or anything like that. So that could be new. But nowadays, one of the things you do during the commands phase is you're going to pick an order and then you would have that face down so that your opponent doesn't know what you're doing. And then you flip them and then it's like, uh, you know, everybody moves. And then I think all the firing happens who are marked fire. I could put somebody on overwatch. I could give them a move fire so they like, it's like a short halt. They, they move a little bit and then they can shoot with some penalties. Or give them no command because I'm just bluffing the opponent. But anyway, that is, oh, NATO turn, turn marker. But that's, uh, that's basically all we got there. Counters, some rules. And then what uh, what the old counters look like versus the new counters. So I'll put these away. And that is a look at another classic game from Avalon Hill. So I'm going to try and put some of this away. You know, I didn't poke little air holes here so I can... I like to squeeze the air out of these. Let's put these away and then we'll put the old stuff away. I hate calling it old stuff, but the classic stuff. We'll put the classic stuff away. Here comes the two Soviet counters. Yeah, and then uh, they also had like turret counters I saw in there. The new game also has turret counters, so there's some right there. Turrets. Also the new game as far as counters. Uh, there's infantry. A few other counters that I've got there just kind of floating around. But uh, that is a comparison. I thought that would be a cool thing to do. Take a classic game and then show the modern equivalent. Uh, so if a person was to ask me, so Eddie, which would you rather play, the old one or the new one? I would play both. I would love to play it for the nostalgia to go back and play it with the, the hard, you know, the mounted map boards and the counters and things. That would be kind of cool to play. However, which one do I think I would prefer to play? Probably the new one. And you might ask why, you might not ask why, but mostly because Jim Day wrote both. So I'm thinking that uh, Jim Day doing the second one, the upgraded MBT and the upgraded Panzer, that those are probably his culmination of years of experience saying, here's what makes the game still really good, but easily accessible. Um, so I would, I would prefer probably to play the new one, but this is still an incredible journey to go back and look at what we had before. So we got the rules back in, the two data cards, here's a card, here's the vehicle cards, and here's, love them, the mounted maps, and the original box. And I, th I can't even, ret I don't even know off the top of my head if the new game, I think the new game had a similar looking art. It's just because uh, when GMT Games sent me my copy of MBT, they had run out of boxes. And they were like, well, we don't have any more boxes. Is that gonna be a problem? Nope, I'll just stick it in my own box. But I don't get to, to look at the cover. So here's the classic. And I think the new one is a very similar too. But uh, hey, thanks for watching. We got a lot more classic games to show you again. I, I don't think I've got too many more examples of old versus new. This is probably the cleanest example that I have of the old one versus the new one. And I hope that you enjoyed looking at the comparison between the two games. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.